सो आवर नेक्स्ट स्पीकर इज प्रोफेसर ऋषा मंडल शी उल टकिंग अबाउट इम्प्रुविंग नन पार्टरवेक्टिव एस्टिमेट्स इन बी मेस एंड दिखेज Okay, so uh, let me uh, first start thanking the organizers for the invitation. So my talk is on improving non-perturbative estimates on beam meson decays. Basically, something we did not hear uh, anything about uh, yesterday and also in today's talk. So for the younger part of the audience, I hope I am audible, right? Okay. So for the younger part of the audience, I will just uh, briefly mention what we do with the B mesons and what are the interesting things there. So basically, uh, you might have come across uh, listening about various uh, FC and C modes in B decay. So where a B quark decays to a S quark via a loop. And in the standard model, these uh, modes are uh, suppressed by the loop and also the CKM. So that's why these are kind of very uh, interesting place where new physics can show up with the loop. Uh, the effect may be in the loop or sometimes maybe in the tree level, depending upon what process you are looking. And the semi-leptonic modes, particularly where a B decays to another meson and the rest is some leptons. So those modes are very uh, interesting because we can construct large number of uh, independent uh, observables or we can perform various measurements at B factories, mostly at B factories. So uh, what do we deal with these uh, uh, observables? So okay, so first is like what are the interesting things we have with these observables at the moment? Some of you might have already heard about uh, the B anomalies, one of them is called this P5 prime which is one of the angular observable which is constructed such a way that it is uh, kind of a ratio of two different coefficients so that we get rid of the hadronic uncertainties up to some extent. Now for this angular uh, coefficient there are measurements from LHCB from long back I think from 2016 their last updated one is to the 2020 data which you can show the blue error bars and that is uh, roughly 5 m to 1 inverse data. And if you see the theory predictions are the standard model, uh, these bands, the orange bands, and you can see there is some deviation with these error bars. Now the most interesting point is very recently, basically last month, CMS also entered into the game and they have measured this uh, P5 prime observable. And you can see there uh, CMS has like huge number of, I mean, huge uh, data. So it's I think one uh, 40 frame to one inverse and those uh, green error bars are actually overlapping with the LHCB measurement. So the long uh, back LHCB pillow are cl came claiming about some three sigma deviation in this observable that is somehow kind of confirmed by CMS as well. So both these error bars are deviating from the theory prediction. So this is currently one of the uh, tension we see. And then also there is some uh, deviation which is seen in say uh, this is another channel where B sub S decays to phi and uh, leptons and but this is not a very fancy observable which I, what I was talking here the, like P5 prime but this is just a, a differential branching fraction. And even in those cases you can see this is just LHCB alone uh, and you can see there is some deviation from the theory prediction and all of them mostly are at the 3 sigma level. and. The x-axis is the invariant uh, dielectron invariant mass square and you see both these deviations are observed in the similar range which is roughly like say uh, around 4 to 8 and this part. Now uh, what I call these observables at, as not so clean observables because although I was claiming that there are certain cancellations uh, between the hadronic part of the physics but still I will now come why those are not so clean and why uh, we should look at the theory prediction more carefully because at some point at somehow we can say that the experimental uh, collaborations are consistent they are giving kind of similar results. So what we deal with these observables? So the angular uh, observables, uh, the main uh, idea is we study things in EFT, which is at the B scale. And the important point is we ha somehow have to separate the 
short distance physics and the long distance physics. So in, in short distance we have the Wilson coefficients which are perturbatively calculable. So basically we can have the new physics effects included there. And in the long distance we have the form factors, basically one meson going to another meson and that form factors are calculated in various uh, techniques. So this land cone sum rule, heavy quark effective theory and also in lattice QCD. Now the other part which is remaining in the long distance is somehow uh, called the non-factorizable contribution. So as I was mentioning, so we study the theory in the EFT at the B quark scale. So all the heavy degrees of freedom top and W all are say integrated out. But as I uh, go back in the, the previous uh, slide, I was showing the penguin and the box diagram. So there you can see even the charm quark can enter. Now the charm mass scale is much lower than the B scale. So that is why you cannot integrate it out and you generate some kind of non-local effects in these contributions. So basically when B goes to S via charm and it emits, emits a gluon which can end anywhere say inside the meson. So those type of contributions are called the non-factorizable or say non-local effects. And those are uh, actually uh, limited by the unknown QCD dynamics. So the challenge is now we are at a situation so we really need to improve our uh, uh, estimate for, for the theory prediction so that we can match up with the uh, or come to any conclusion with the experimental observations. So first part uh, I will uh, talk about improving one of the very uh, important parameter which is called here this lambda b or lambda b sub s. Basically it is uh, inverse moment of the uh, distribution amplitude which is this phi plus. So distribution amplitude you can think at, at the moment in a very crude way like kind of a wave function for B meson. Okay, I will come to the formal definition of it but just can think like some non perturbative uh, quantity and the, its inverse moment is this lambda bs which actually enters in almost all of the predictions which I was showing in the previous case where we use the B distribution amplitude to predict the form factors. Now if we look at the value, so how we compute, so there are certain techniques in QCD sum rule. Uh, I will also come in the description, but just to give you the idea of the numbers. So this was first calculated in 2004 for the lambda b and we also repeated the calculation for lambda b sub s starting from this first principle. And you see the values and the uncertainties which are pretty large. So because they are, we cannot control the non-local um, effects of the condenser, so we rely on various modeling and that's, that actually gives rise to a uh, kind of significant uh, uncertainty. So what can be the other ways to actually extract? So there is uh, one decay mode which is a photoelectronic mode where B decays to lepton, neutrino and a photon. So in this mode we can actually directly extract the lambda B because from the theory prediction if we write this uh, branching fraction it, it depends on the lambda B factor and from experimental data we can extract. But unfortunately uh, uh, this is limited by the statistics and also I mean because there we need to put some cards on the photon energy. So we do not have any signal for this mode at the moment in any of the factories, B factories. So there is also a possibility that we get some estimate of this quantity from lattice, but still, I mean, I mean, it takes time. So, and another possibility for lambda B sub S, so B sub S is a neutral meson because it's a B quark and the S quark bound state. So it can only go to L plus, L minus and photon. But then again, this is contaminated a lot by the non-local effects because L plus, L minus can arise from any other uh, mesons, vector mesons. So we need to understand the difference between lambda B and lambda B sub S because as you see there is like, we just replace the light quark by the strange quark mass. So the SU3 violation effects which we generally see at various other properties of B mesons. So we need to understand if there is any difference. And what we go for, we look for some indirect methods if we can now constra constrain the, the values of this inverse moment. So the idea was to um, use the estimates from the lattice uh, collaboration, HPQCD collaboration, where they have actually uh, given the prediction of B to or B sub S to some pseudo scalar meson at the Q square equal to zero, which is the zero momentum transfer. 
which is generally a bit unusual for the lattice group because lattice is much more reliable at the high Q square region where they can perform their simulation. Uh, where they can control their uncertainties. But somehow uh, this HPQCD collaboration, they have improved their technique with the finer uh, lattice size. They actually provided this B2P form factors with very small uncertainty uh, in some, for some, some modes. So our idea was to compare with the light cone sum rule prediction uh, of uh, these uh, form factors and with this lattice data. So what I was mentioning say whether QCD sum rule or light cone sum rule, what are these? These are kind of some non-perturbative uh, methods, uh, and some methods to estimate non-perturbative parameters which is completely based on OPE or partial product expansion. Okay. So we uh, separate this part into two which is one of these is perturbatively calculable observable and other part is square gluon condensates or the distribution amplitudes. So you can think like characteristics of QCD vacuum can be included in this second part. And then when we have the OPE expression, we just use the dispersion relation to relate this non-perturbative uh, to the OPE part to the sum of the physical uh, hadronic parameters. But again, this is an approximated uh, method, so we really need to uh, make some assumptions. So the limitations are, they actually depend also um, on model answers. So for example, in this case, I was just showing if we want to predict, say, the decay constant of any meson. So it's like, mm, assume that the spectral density is mostly saturated by, by the ground state contribution and the ground state is actually separated from the excited states uh, significantly so that we can perform the analysis. So just I uh, highlight the key steps for the calculation of B2P form factor. So we start with this correlation function where we have the weak current. Basically you see B quark, uh, B meson is becoming some other light meson. So we have some B to light weak transition and then this is the interpolating current which is interpolating the, the light uh, pseudoscalar meson. And then we use the hadronic uh, dispersion relation. So we actually insert all possible states which are compatible with the quantum numbers and then as I was mentioning in the previous slide, we separate out the ground state and the rest is kept in the in the uh, uh, dispersion integral. So then here you see the first part is just giving the decay constant of the light meson and the second part is the green part is what is the form factors which we desire basically B to P. And using the, the low range uh, symmetry and whatever the possible uh, vectors we have for B to P. Yeah, for the weak uh, tensor and the normal V minus A structure, we can parameterize the form factors in uh, in terms of three form factors, F plus, F0 and FD. And these are some mass factors. So that was the hadronic part and now we go for the OPE calculation which I was mentioning that. Uh, so we expand the correlator uh, in the light cone region, so basically uh, in the in the momentum space, it goes for the negative Q square region, and we can write it like this. And the whole non-perturbative business actually enters via this B two vacuum matrix element, which is shown here. This is the most simple one, and the LCD is the phi plus, which is actually uh, the which inverse moment is related to lambda B s, but it is not just phi plus. There are many other uh, the uh, LCDs which can enter. So, but all of them can be actually parameterized in terms of lambda b if we use the systematic uh, expansion in uh, uh, heavy quark effective theory. So, once we have this uh, OP relation, then the idea is we match the hadronic representation to the OP uh, using the quark hadron duality. So, in this case, we uh, really have to come up with some uh, threshold which works better for this matching. And not just that, we also have to come up uh, some technique which is a Borel transform we perform so that we can suppress the contribution from the excited state and all other continuum states. So, just uh, sketching the whole procedure, I'm not showing you the uh, exact expressions of the form factors what we obtain, but basically the form factors you can think here are function of, of course, Q square is the invariant uh, dielectron invariant mass square or the momentum transfer. The Borel parameter is M square and S0 is the duality threshold. 
which we will determine in the next slide and then there is this parameter lambda b which is entering as the non perturbative input so here also there are few more uh, parameters which sometimes enter basically the x uh, apart from the mass factors there are other moments also lambda e and lambda h but i am not going into those at the moment so now once we have the theory expression for the form factors the unknown is for example first d is 0 so that we determine from the decay constant sum rule and this is uh, just just a sum rule where this part is the hadronic part and this is the OPE part and you can see the, the perturbative uh, the leading order and the NLO contributions can be uh, computed uh, using from these diagrams of course there are other combinations of uh, these uh, NLO parts and this GG and this uh, S bar S these are all the quark uh, I mean all the condensate contribution so first one is the quark condensate you can think the diagram like this so basically the current is producing the quark anti quark and then the idea is in the QCD vacuum you always have uh, some fluctuations so whatever the produced quark or anti quark they are actually interacting with the QCD vacuum and also that is giving rise this uh, interaction with the condensate so it can contribute uh, uh, it can interact with the quarks, it can interact with quark gluon and uh, quark and two diagrams possible and also just through the gluon. So with all those uh, contributions mm, we can write the sum rule here and the idea was to get the effective threshold so just you can perform some uh, trick just to uh, try take the derivative and then you can cancel all other parameters and you can equate it to the mass to solve the H0 okay previous slide I mentioned it as H0 so this is same as H0 so once we know the H0 so then the next part was we know the theory expression we just fit to the lattice data which we, which we had from the HPQCD collaboration and of course we varied some of the other parameters in the uh, chi-square fit as nuisance and these are our results so the first line is for B2K which is giving us the lambda B prediction and you can see this is the prediction here and if we compare with our old QCD sum rule uh, prediction so it's kind of quite a significant improvement in terms of the uncertainty. We have also done the similar analysis but this time for B sub S to eta S meson but just to mention this eta S meson is completely fictitious meson. Uh, meson. So there is nothing like eta s in the nature which is a pure ss bar bound state what lattice people do they actually uh, calculate uh, properties of this eta s just to calibrate their s quark mass mostly in their analysis and also perform some other calibration for b sub s to uh, strange meson uh, systems so what we do did we actually used just the lattice data which is in principle for no use for other community we use that uh, as a data and then we predict uh, the lambda b sub s like this so you see also here kind of two times improvement in the uncertainty uh, okay so so this is uh, the improvement in the parameter and then we just go and look back so what are the implications so there are suggest this is just illustration for some of the modes so basically this is b sub s to ds where you can see with our new predict updated value of lambda bs sometimes there is a uh, shrink in the form factor bands compared to the other um, old predictions of the same form factors of course this high q square region is lattice and we cannot compare with the lattice data at all in that region and also it is not even valid in the that q square range also something similar for uh, b2 pi channel so here also we see certain kind of improvements so basically reduced uncertainty in the form factor we also just make a prediction for the photoelectronic model which I was mentioning so basically B decays to lepton neutrino and the photon which is what this leading order diagram is here and this can be calculated uh, by systematically including the power correction of inverse yeah, of the photon energy and also the B mass and this is done in this paper and you can see the branching ratio of this mode is actually very sensitive to the lambda B value so they actually varied it from 0.2 to 0.6 because at, because the uncertainties were not uh, uh, small in this case so they just varied and give the prediction so now with our constant value of the lambda bs 
we can actually predict uh, the branching fraction with uh, much more less uncertainty. So the summary of this this first part is like we have the updated value and now we can see this effect in various other modes. These were just a few examples. So wherever you use even QCD factorization to predict the weak decay predictions, we can we can uh, use these values. Okay, so now for the last uh, maybe the five minutes of my talk, I move to the next part, which I was advertising in the first very first slides that there are certain non-local effects and we need to know them. So this diagram which I was showing. So lambda b was lambda b or lambda b s just was just some one non-perturbative quantity, and now we go for much more detailed uh, analysis to improve the non-local effects. So this is say for the amplitude for B sub S going to a phi meson and the lepton and anti lepton and you can write it like this where these are the standard uh, operators which arise in the standard model uh, V minus A structure with this uh, photon emission you can also get a tensor structure and I mean this is also V minus X A combined for the lepton channel. And it was uh, shown by uh, Kojimirian and the company in 2010 that this type of diagrams you can calculate, take into account its effect uh, via this uh, non-local part which is this H mu and the non-factorizable part can be given like this where these are some Wilson coefficients and this O mu tilde is the operator which actually you generate once you uh, calculate this loop with the soft gluon emission. So this was calculated in uh, like on uh, some rule. So the leading contribution comes from the quark gluon and anti quark uh, non-local operator. So that actually brings the contribution from three particle distribution amplitude. Previously for lambda B analysis, I was only showing you the two particle contribution. Basically a B was going to vacuum just by a, a, a current which made from quark and anti quark. Now just not quark and antiquark, we even have a gluon inside because you can just see from the diagram the gluon is there. So uh, that's why the three particle uh, contribution comes and what we can show even without knowing the what exactly the value or the, uh, the form of H mu is, just from this amplitude we can see that since this is related to the uh, vector current of the lepton part, at the, at the end you can take its effect into some shift in the Wilson coefficient C9 which is shown here say let us call it delta C9 which will be the ratio of this non-local part and this F lambda which I denote as the local part. So the, I, the main um, noise for this not so clean observable is that you can actually cause a shift in the Wilson coefficient delta C, uh, Wilson coefficient C9 by some amount because of this non-local effects and this is very crucial to distinguish from the new physics because if you have heard about some of the uh, global fit analysis where this uh, in the era of RK, RK star and all other anomalies where people are coming with the, some kind of global fit and they are showing some tension where you can have some shifted value of the C9 Wilson coefficient. So that is that same C9 and you can see that same C9 shift can arise from the non-local part. So as I was mentioning the previous calculation they have tried to come up with some prediction of the non-local but however there is order 3 difference between these two calculations. The first calculation was by Kojemirian and company where the effects were at, at the level of 10 to the power minus 4 and later in 2021 it was repeated by uh, the Van Dyke group and they get it very small. So our idea is like we need to improve this prediction by including the uh, complete set of LCDS and this is a work which is uh, ongoing with uh, uh, the PhD student Praveen and the postdoc who was working with me Ifshita and also Alam. So Alam is uh, the PhD student from this department so he is also working as a postdoc in my group. So we are trying to um, revisit the cancellation which was actually mentioned uh, in this paper and what is actually the order of magnitude for the non-local effects. And our very preliminary result says that we actually get a 10 times enhancement in the non-local form factors and also we um, um, uh, also we have reduced the uncertainties quite a bit because we have used the improved set of parameters. So this is a very uh, freshly baked uh, plot from Alam. So I mean 
very very preliminary so just not to emphasize a lot but just to uh, show you that this is a plot for delta c9 and with the q square of course this is in the negative q square region where we can calculate things and we do really see a shift of order like minus 1 for this delta c9 lamp, uh, perpendicular or say delta c9 parallel which is uh, actually hinted from all the global feet analysis but okay then the question is we need to um, extrapolate it to the physical region via dispersion relation so this is still at the stage where uh, we need to perform few more checks and uh, few more uh, analysis are yet to be done for this part and the most important part for this comes where we go in the very high q square region where we hit the charmonium pole so basically the jeb shai pole and the shai 2s pole so if uh, okay this is that was in my second slide where we show the branching fraction plot we see around 9 gb square we start hitting the um, the jeb shai pole so we need to come up with some model answers or we need to use the charmonium data to constrain that part in the region because at the moment lcsr is is valid at the negative and we uh, need dispersion relation and this data on the on the states to actually extrapolate it to the physical region okay so this actually comes uh, end uh, of my talk so what i just want to highlight that um, lhcb and bell 2 will be running for next 10 years and also we saw that cms is also in the game and they are providing uh, results which are much more precise than what LHCB had previously for that particular mode. So there will definitely be validation of the discrepancies which were observed, which are observed so far. And not just that, there are plenty of decay channels which are already measured at experiment and from the theory side, we do not have any clue even about their uh, theory prediction. So a lot more efforts are needed to, to explore the all the B and C, C hadron decay channels so so very interesting time for say flavor physics so thank you yeah thank you uh, so maybe one or two quick questions Data from the uh, HPQCD collaboration, they had uh, done uh, calculation at Q square equals to zero. So, is it uh, the usual Z expansion from the high Q square region or actual no, calculation? Actual calculation. But so, in the plots that you showed, uh, comparison with the lattice data on slide 11, the uh, data was on high Q square, right? The, the, yeah, oh, slide 10. Yeah. But this is a completely different mode. So, okay. this is B sub S to DS. Uh, I have a little confusion about. Oh, uh, sorry. <laughs> I have a little confusion. Mm -hmm. It's my own confusion about one of the statements you made at the beginning. Uh, when it's a scalar meson decaying into another scalar meson, and if it is a two body decay, then I have a little difficulty in understanding what do you mean by saying that the form factors will affect the angular distributions. So, uh, okay, it first the it angular distribution was not for two body decay. It's for three body decays. Three body decay. so Th this is what. This is, and also the full angular distribution is for vector. So, B yes, if it is a vector meson, then of course it's completely understandable. Hmm. But when scalar meson decaying into scalar meson, then at least for two bodies, there is no dependence on form factors in the angular distribution. Yeah, okay, then we agree. Hmm. Thank you. Okay, so thank you, Krishan.